welcome back to what is finally, I think, episode two of season two of the Orlando Solar Bears podcast. It's been a long time coming. Jesse Liebman here at the New Six Studios alongside Solar Bears forwards Taylor Thompson and John O'May. Uh, now, guys, you weren't here when we restarted the season back in the fall. I think our guest at the time was Alexander Kukali, Mike Monfredo, and then the schedule just got completely away from us. This is probably the wackiest schedule uh, in my time in the ECHL. Uh, Taylor, this is your third year back with the Solar Bears. So, I mean, in recent memory, or and Jono last year as a rookie with Greenville, can you think of a time where the schedule was more calmer than the, the, or, or more crazier than this? Yeah, it was... I don't know. I don't know whoever designed the schedule. Absolute burger of a schedule. <laughs> like three and threes on the road all the time. I mean, bouncing different cities one after the other. Yeah, well, isn't it that uh, you, someone said it's a computer program that they use in the NHL? I guess they went to a computer program or some sort of software this year to to take care of it. But I think they just carbon copied yeah. last season's schedule and just added a few more wrinkles to it. Oh yeah, I forget we don't charter we don't have the luxury of chartering places like the nhl yeah no definitely definitely been crazy i think the weekend yeah uh, i got traded here was probably one of the craziest road schedules i've ever had i mean especially because you guys came to greenville but then we went to jacksonville back to greenville to south carolina yeah it was something it was like, like hotel was at tough. 2 a.m wake up breakfast skate 2 a.m hotel wake up breakfast skate i think that week because you were traded to us on friday the 13th Greenville, then Jacksonville, Greenville. Yeah, it was just then, a lot of road trips. And you had your car, so you yeah. had to follow. Yeah, you, and then did I, you follow the bus or on the way back, or did you just stay in Greenville overnight and then like knock that out during the day? Because no, that's a long drive. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough. My dad actually flew out for uh, to help pa- help me pack and drive down. So uh, I stayed the night and then woke up and we it was like eight hours, eight hours, nine hours. So kind of took our time, but. Ha- happy he was there because I slept for most of the trip. So huge. Yeah, I would definitely nice. recommend that. Yeah. Well, okay. So now that the season where we're in full swing, we're past the halfway point. At the time that the season had started up, you guys weren't necessarily here. You had signed but had gone overseas. You, I mean, th- that's actually something that we don't get too often for for the fans to get that perspective. I, I know we kind of talked about it a little bit for a radio interview back in the in the fall when you rejoined the team out in Idaho. But what was that experience like? Making the decision, go to Europe and then try it out and you realized, eh, maybe it's not for me. Yeah, uh, like I said, I went to Europe. Uh, it was a good, uh, good deal. I mean, money made sense. Uh, got there. It's a little lonely. Uh, you're only only speaking English guy and, you know, you like to just, I like to talk to the guys, you know, say what's up in the morning, how's your sleep, you know, whatever, just, you know, keep it loose. And that was tough. So I made the decision, come back. And, you know, I then I decided, like, I think I'm just going to hang them up was just farming for two months and you know i hadn't done much of anything i was on the tractor for a good two months we were harvesting and then old drakey called me up and asked if i wanted to come back and here we are back with the bears uh, and I think that's something important to clarify for for fans as well is with ECHL players go to Europe Typically, in order to protect that player, you have to be placed on team suspension. That runs for 40 days. So even if you had gotten off the plane and in, in, you were in Slovakia, right? Czech. Czech yeah. Republic. Okay. You get off the plane in, in, in Prague or wherever and you decide, hey, you know what? Let's head back. It's not as easy as being able to jump right back into things. There was a, a bit of a waiting period. I think it was a 40-day suspension or something like that. And then it was like at, around that 40 days... Uh, that's when Drake got a hold of me. He's like, are you still looking to play? And we talked about it, and, yeah, and then it came back. But, yeah, I think I think you can get traded, though. If Drake wanted to trade me or something, because it happened with Lodgy yeah, there. Lodgy. So like, if you trade them, and then that... And that negates that, four days. Yeah, that lifts the suspension. But And so now, of course, you've been back in a couple of months since. Uh, how are things feeling? Good. Good bunch of guys. We picked up John O'May. Uh, a couple other good additions. I think we've got a good good squad this year, and you know, good bunch of guys. Everyone gets along pretty well. And for you, Jono, you know, midseason trade as we we kind of talk about the hockey things and and get everyone up to speed. You joined the team in mid December, uh, and at the time you were playing with Greenville, uh, and 
it's kind of a, a different scenario for them this year. They they had a new affiliate. There were a lot of players that were keeping you kind of buried on the depth chart after having a pretty impressive rookie season with Greenville last year. Uh, and what was it like, especially it's not too often where you get a trade announced and it's okay, pack your bags, you know, here's your flight. For you, it was literally walk down the hall. We were in Greenville. So, I mean, what was that experience like? Uh, so that was my first time ever being traded. So that was definitely, um, I didn't really know what to expect. But uh, the locker room trade, I've heard about them. I didn't know that they were real things. But it was uh, it was definitely a little weird. Um, and I was just coming into a locker room and you're playing against the guys you've been with for over a year and a half. So, um, I mean, I'm really happy and, you know, I'm super excited about the opportunity and being here it's a great place but um definitely initially it was you know a little nerves you know you're walking the locker room you're meeting a bunch of new guys a bunch of new faces and then not only that is then you're playing against you know guys like i said that like at at that night i thought i was going to be playing orlando the next day not you know what i mean so um but no i mean looking back on everything i'm just so happy and so grateful to be here well, what do you think has been working well for you? Because since the trade, uh, your production level has really taken off offensively. At this point, you're about hovering around that point-per-game pace uh, and well ahead of, of what your numbers were even last year with, with Greenville when you were in one of those top-line roles for the Swamp Rabbits. So w- what's changed? What's what's leading to the success so far? Um, you know, I mean, it's like I always say, big kudos to this team. Uh, it's for me kind of like getting in here and just getting adjusted uh it's a great group of guys it was like right away it kind of just felt like you know like you're part of the team right away and that's a big kudos to them and then um just really good you know like line mates and stuff and um it's always just like opportunities um been getting a good opportunity here and um just trying to make the most of it well since then uh things have turned around for the solar bears right now orlando if the playoffs were to start today it would be a third consecutive trip to the postseason for Orlando. Or actually, 17, 18, 19, 20, four, So four, fourth consecutive trip to the postseason. Um, and right now, big schedule coming up for Orlando. Uh, tomorrow, team heads out down to Estero, Florida to take on the Everblades. It's the first time that we've seen them since mid-November. So I think that was right around the time that you came back. I don't think you were on the roster just yet. You joined the team yeah. after we went out to the, to the Mountain Division. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, Jono, I know you're a little familiar with Florida, just having played within the division last year. But what are you guys looking forward to uh, with these big games coming up? You got Florida tomorrow, then two games against South Carolina at home, and then Florida at home on Sunday. I think it'll be a good test to see how we are as a team. These are two good teams ahead of us in the standings. And, I mean, I, I think we match up really good against both of them. Um, Florida's always a good team. Soko is usually always a good team. Last time we played Soko, I thought we played one of our better games since I've been here. Um, but I think, it, like Tom said, it's going to be a really good test. I mean, we want to be up there in the standings. That's the top two teams. It's going to show us where we need to do and what we need to do to be up there. To touch on um, the Jono trade, <laughs> when, uh, well, for those who don't know, last season, Jono suffered a significant <laughs> knee injury. A, was it ACL, MCL? ACL, MCL, LCL, and broken tibial plateau. Oh, gosh. And Oh, that's right. I oh. was the one who snatched up his knee. Oh, boy. Uh, it was an accidental play. But at the time, I was thinking, I'm like, oh, no. Like, like what am I going to say to this guy? Like, I just, like, that's a pretty significant injury to come back from, eh? Like, right? Like, yeah. you rehabbed for yeah, all it was, summer. It was I, supposed to be eight months, and I got back pretty early yeah so John will coming into the team I'm like oh man like this guy probably hates me and I just like look at him in the locker room and I'm like John I'm like sorry about last season man good to see you back <laughs> and then he's like yeah man <laughs> <laughs> I wanted on record I completely slipped my mind when I was trying to pick guys to, to do this episode today I did not even think for a moment oh about me and that. John are boys yeah, now we yeah. play tennis all the time together like yeah. it's actually no it's it definitely got worked out Tom reached out. He said, sorry, apologize for it. So it was, it was all set. Right on. Well, there we go. We got that patched up and out of the way. So yeah, buried the hatchet. No really. awkwardness. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little awkward. The, the first, the first interaction, was, it was the like. The first day was a little, a little bit there. We yeah. addressed it. Uh, yeah, 100%. Moved on. There we go. Beautiful. So, I mean, r- most recently, pretty fun swing through the Midwest, I'd have to say. We went up and played some Central Division teams, Cincinnati uh, on Wednesday and then Friday, Saturday in the wheel. Mm-hmm. So what was that experience like for you guys? Interesting. 
Yeah, Wheeling's kind of a dump. Like, I mean, no offense to anyone from Wheeling, but it, it's, it's not like a great city. Like, it, it's like there's some buildings that need a lot of work. Yeah, it, but, I think it's more of it's, it's, you know, it's like an older town. Mm-hmm. It's got its looks and stuff. Um, but, you know, Cincinnati, really good team. Wheeling, also a very good team. Uh, wish we could get those two back. That's, yeah, we needed those. We, 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 we really played a well, like a really well-rounded game, and I just it was a couple bounces and, um, I mean, two one-goal games. Right, it was, it was, it was Friday. Since, yeah, since he was 2-1. And wasn't then 3-2 it? on Friday. Yeah, yeah. it was... Yeah, those those two will bother me. Like I said, it's I think right now we're we're getting to the point where we need to keep getting points and stuff, and um, it, but that just shows how tight this race is. I mean, two good teams and we matched up really well. Just didn't get our bounces. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the other thing too. I mean, you we that those are two teams that we won't see for the remainder of the regular season. For those three one points. the one off with Cincy, the two with Wheeling. We were able to get two points with that that five two win on Saturday night. Um, Stylistically, though, how much of a difference is it from some of the, the typical opponents, the Floridas, the Greenvilles, the South Carolinas, the Norfolks within the division? Oh, I thought both their barns were tiny. So that, that, that made a huge adjustment for both those teams. I thought everything was happening really fast. And Cincinnati's rink was super small. Boards are weird. And then even Wheeling's. I mean, the neutral zone was so – it just yeah. changes the game, especially when we're playing at home. I feel like we have a pretty big rink. But Florida's going to be like that as well. They have a small rink. Yeah. I honestly don't – I don't think I got hit, like, all weekend. Like, they, I didn't think they were very physical either, those teams. But, yeah. like, playing in this division, I think yeah, I think it's, like, a little more physical. Like it's, yeah, South's definitely a lot more physical, I think. Yeah. But I think that's kind of consensus. A lot of guys say that. Yeah. So, as – we go through the season. There's a lot of stuff, the ups and downs. Uh, away from the ice, what do you guys do in, in your downtime just to kind of pass the time? Especially here in Orlando, you got a lot of options. And, John, I know it's been only a couple of months. You haven't, And we've been on the road for yeah. most of January, so not a whole lot of a chance to settle in and get into a groove. But what have you been able to do to kill some time when you're away from the rink and just unwind? I know you're a big tennis guy. Yeah, I'm still exploring. Um, I love to fish, so I've been looking to uh, try and find some, some lakes or ponds to go fishing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, me and Tom are playing ten- tennis quite a bit. We got the RDV that, you know, it's a great facility. A lot of guys spend a lot of time there. And then, um, you know, some of these crazy road schedules, It's you don't really have much time to do much because you're kind of just rehabbing and getting ready for uh, the next road trip, next game. So, the yeah, definitely looking for a little bit of time to do a little exploring and kind of see all the, the facilities and everything around here. Yeah, we had like the, yeah, like you said, the schedule's been pretty tough to even like really do anything. Like you get back and you might have a day off, but yeah, that's your day off. You just kind of like want to recover. Yeah, you're, on, you're on the couch and you're yeah, you're, you're tired and yeah, you're just you might go to the RDV and like sweat it out or you know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah. But well, yeah, the d- days we have had off, we 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 bang out some tennis and. Go to the pool. Yeah, I mean those are, those are good days. Yeah, when we get some yeah. sun here, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, especially going out on some of those road trips. Or, I mean, I feel bad saying this because I'm from Minnesota, and I love the love the cold. But being here in 70 degree sunny weather, it's tough tough to beat. Can't really beat it. Mm-hmm. No, it's tough to beat. Well, as you can see here, it's not yeah. like I'm getting much of a benefit from it. So, <laughs> oh well. Um, Obviously, you guys play tennis a lot, but from what I understand, you've also been keeping busy with uh, some dog training. Yes, I got a uh, dog at the end of last season. Harper is her name, Golden Doodle. It's a nice dog. Yeah, yeah, she's a good dog. Starting to train her a little bit, go to PetSmart, taking some classes. Uh, you know, just shaky or no? She, like she's she's pretty calm. Like she's a chill dog, but. She she don't listen too well. You call her, she doesn't come. Like she kind of beats their own her own drum there. But we'll we'll get there, you know. So what she what she excelling at at least? She uh, she I, I, she doesn't really do too much bad behavior. She just like she walks pretty good on the leash. Uh, the one thing though, like when we're we're in the, like we live live on a farm in the. Uh, summer, so she chases vehicles. That's a it's mm, a pretty dangerous. That's, that's a dangerous game to be playing. That's so scary. we're trying to get that uh, under wraps, but it's only in yesterday was week two, so I think it's an eight week course. So we'll get there. Plenty of time. So what's the the one command that you know that you've got down pat with her at this point? Um, she's pretty good at just like sitting shaking like we always just like treat yeah yeah she sees a treat she'll just on on its automatic just sit down and like give you her paw she she knows knows. yeah knows knows. it's coming 
What about you, Johnny? You got any pets back home in Minnesota? Or no, not right now. I I would love to get a dog. I just I I don't have enough time for it right now. But um, the way I grew up with black labs, so uh, good hunting dogs. And I mean, I just love I love dogs. But soon, soon. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Like I have my fiance down here, yeah, so like that's a huge help. Yeah, she oh, yeah. she can watch when we're on the road and stuff. It's I think it'd be tough if you're like yeah, if you're just yeah, by yourself it, with a dog. And what are you supposed to do when you're on the road, exactly. right? Exactly. And then I I mean I like I said I really appreciate dogs. And I'd feel bad if I was somewhat not intentionally but mistreating it by not being in like and spend enough time with it. Especially when it's young, you want to get a bunch of time like you're mm-hmm. doing. You're doing the training. Can't really you know what I mean. These two week, one week road trips aren't the best for it. Yeah. Right. Well, of course, coming back from the road trip, though, Sunday night, Super Bowl Sunday. And yeah, we got in, I want to say, we flew back from Pittsburgh, got in maybe touchdown right after the first quarter ended, probably got all the equipment off onto the truck, and we got on the bus, probably got back to the to RDV just as the second half or the, the first half was ending. Yeah. Right? I think, like I think right I around got, the halftime show. I think yeah. it was halftime show. I got back, yeah, J-Lo was like just performing. She was ready. Yeah. I think I, they killed it. Great performance. Yeah, they did a good job. Everyone was buzzing about it on, yeah. the, on, yeah. on the line. Here's the thing that I don't get that it, it just blows my mind is Shakira has put out jam after jam after jam, year after year after year, but she kind of flew under the radar the last several years. Yeah. Like I remember when she had like that big crossover debut album. I want to say like we would have been in like middle school, early high school, and you could not go anywhere without seeing Shakira. And yeah. then she kind of faded, not into obscurity, but just you kind of forget about it with Mid- all the other middle school dances. She was huge. Yeah. I, I won't forget that. She married. <laughs> yeah, she's married to some. Uh, I think either Spanish. I think Spanish soccer player, and I think she lives in Spain with him. Oh, well, good for him. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, I think they met like at one of her music videos, like filming for the because she did like a couple of the World Cup themes the last few oh, years. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah, waka waka. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> there we good. go. <laughs> that's from the FIFA game, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, her—that's the thing that blows that blew my mind away from the halftime performance is just how dedicated that they are. Like you talk about, you know, Kobe, rest in peace. But the Mamba mentality—that just sort of killer instinct that like people, whether it's in sports or or music, dance film literature whatever like that killer instinct that's that's something that always really impressed me like yeah. the dedication that someone has like to just excel and yeah, they were you got i mean at that level you have to mm-hmm. they got to be on point at all times no matter what they're doing if they're eating lunch they're doing it right like i don't know i just i just feel like with, the, with their schedules it's just obscene the amount of stuff they have to do especially like these top artists crazy where would you guys put that in terms of all time like halftime performances that you've seen I don't know. I'm not a huge NFL guy. I'm more of a CFL, Canadian Football League. What, what do they even have for the, the CFL, the Grey Cup uh, halftime show? Well, I think Nickelback's been out there. Uh. <laughs> Shania Twain, probably. I uh, yeah, can't go wrong with Shania. Is, is Johnny Manziel Sheep going dogs. back to that league, or is he done? I think he got... Uh, there was something he he had a violation he had he had to follow certain like protocol and he didn't he, Wait, didn't. he had signed with Montreal or he was with Hamilton, Hamilton and then they already had a pretty good quarterback so he was like a what a side show yeah. yeah what a side he, he got show. traded to Montreal and he was like actually pretty good but I don't know yeah something he had to follow protocol and he never did they never said what it was though what he did he's is he out of football altogether or is he I know that they've got the XFL starting up in a couple of weeks, like the summer league that Vince McMahon is putting together. I guess we'll see how if he winds up. I think they've got a team in Tampa, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I mean, I think he he's sober, isn't he? I don't know. It just amazes me when guys and I like. I, I know people have stuff. All of these things go on, but like even Reggie Bush, like guys who go out in college football and just absolutely dominate, and then can't cut in the NFL yeah. I just feel like it's just wrong timing wrong team wrong timing wrong system a lot of you know it what I mean? is that like, though yeah it's just going to be right place right time like, but. Uh, my, my biggest one is how does Reggie Bush do he like his college highlight film mm-hmm. anyone at home hasn't seen it go watch it because it's amazing like he's dancing around these guys and then he goes in the NFL and he can't cut it I don't know I, that's just something that's always been interesting well, to me he had a few good years for the Saints though didn't he 
Yeah, but I just feel like it would translate more, right? Because yeah. all these guys from the NFL are coming from the top college guys, and if he's doing this, he's at USU, who they play the highest end schedule every year. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even Manziel, he had some killer years in college. I don't know. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's uh, that's always interesting when you see like the the. Like I said, the people that really just hone in on their craft and yeah. they just have that killer instinct. That's something that just always blows me away. For me, you know, halftime performance ranking it, I'd probably put in, in my top three. What's your number one? Prince. When Prince did the halftime show a couple of years back in Miami. Minnesota. Let's go. There you go. See, I knew you'd like that. Mm-hmm. The the best thing, I saw this, uh, they did, uh, I guess it was after he passed, they did a NFL Network like retrospective on the halftime show. And it's like pouring rain, and one of the producers goes to Prince, and they're like, hey, so there's a problem. Like, there's a lot of rain. And Prince just, his response is, Prince just goes and looks at me and just says, can you make it rain more? <laughs> Legend. How intense is that's that? That's awesome. That's, yeah. Uh, I mean. And th- that's another example of a guy that was just w- killed it at everything that he did. Like, just just a master dedicated to his craft. Yeah, he's. Actually, yeah. You're f- so you're from Minnesota. How, how understated or overstated is the love for Prince in Minnesota? I think it's weird because, like, I would say, like, I should be a bigger Prince fan. Like, I mean, I know his stuff and all that, but, like, I wouldn't say I'm a crazy huge Prince fan. But you'll 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 see it here and there throughout the city, but then they'll, like, like the Twins or the Vikings or the Wild will have a Prince game, and it's – everything's purple. Everyone's, everyone's there. Everyone's supporting it. So it's, like, it's kind of in and out. But, I mean, like, a lot of the small local theaters, um, like, the, it's everything's Prince on, you know, the streets, the sides. So it's – I don't know. I think it's – there's a – pretty good following for him there but uh it's like in and out i don't know now you grew up how far out of the twin cities i'm about 20 minutes so i i grew up in monomedi minnesota it's right next to stillwater uh we're right next to the wisconsin border um grew on grew up on my like where my family settled so uh kind of interesting have a lot of acres and stuff kind of like tomer but i'm also like 20 minutes from downtown so it's kind of like best of both worlds but grew up with lots of pine trees lots of animals so it was fun i have to assume then you're a vikings fan oh yeah but that's also it's a tough you're right on the border with wisconsin i'm no, sure there's a no, lot of crossover there's nothing to do with green bay it's just tough to be a fan of them they always let you down oh hmm. well you're, ta- they, you're they preaching get, to the choir you're talking to so, a jets fan here yeah that's worse yeah that, that's real worse <laughs> tell me about it but yeah no i mean i love the vikings i would always root for them and it's just it's tough they, they have such good teams and whenever Every year when they think they're going to do it, something happens. And, I mean, was it two years ago when they missed the field goal? That was yeah. hard. Bro- like, my heart, that was that was, that was was tough. So what do you think about the uh, skull clap being basically uh, stolen by the Carolina Hurricanes? Because weren't the Vikings really the, the big ones that, that did that? And now you got the yeah. Canes in the NHL rocking was, that? It was the Vikings and the Gophers, too. Really? So the Minnesota Gophers, they have a, they have a s- surreal stadium they just built a couple of years ago. But that's kind of been a thing with them. And then, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, chance to chant, right? Mm-hmm. There's, I feel like uh, Chicago stole someone's goal horn, too. Sweet Caroline? I don't know. I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I don't know. Hmm. I, heard, I think I heard that on something. Someone was going at them for stealing a, a big goal horn. I don't know. I feel like I feel like a lot of things. It can only be so many things, right? Right. Well, you. So you grew up. You're a '94 birth year. '93. '93. So you would have you would have missed the North Stars completely. So are you a Wild fan, or did you grow up a Wild fan? Or yep. So I'm a Wild fan. I actually know. Um, I knew about the North Stars. I, not that I went and saw them or anything, mm-hmm. but um, I had a couple of friends' dads that played for the North Stars. And oh, really? So that was always a big thing, and all the drama with them moving out and whatnot. But um, yeah, the Wild, another team that needs a cup. The only team that's been real successful for us is the uh, the Lynx, the women's basketball team out in Mini. And they play at the same building that the T-Wolves play at, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that been, that's like, honestly, I mean, 
Minnesota's had some really good teams, just no championships yet. So hopefully the next decade I'll be able to live up a couple, like some of the Boston boys. Yeah. Well, that's with respect to pro teams, but obviously, Minnesota, you're coming from a hockey hotbed. There's nothing bigger than the college hockey. I would actually argue the high school hockey is probably bigger in Minnesota than, than even the college game. I mean, don't they pack the, the XL Energy Center for the high school championship every year? Yeah, so I was fortunate enough. I played in it my sophomore year. Um, state tournament, I would say. So there's two classes, um, single A, double A. And I played in um, the single A tournament. We made it to the semis. And I think I think we had something like eighteen, nineteen thousand 19,000 in our game. But the double A is always the most. Mm-hmm. Um, like when Edina will play, actually Ole had a really big game. I think Ole might have been in the, you, you could stat check I this. I think you're right. He might have been in the, the most, the, the biggest crowd the XL has ever held. I think it was uh, Duluth East versus Edina semifinals. And it was like 25,000 where the Wild will only get... 19 to 20,000. So, I mean, I actually was at that game. It was... So why is it in Minnesota that you think the high school hockey is so popular? Why not in you know, Michigan, which has a pretty good youth hockey, and Massachusetts, some other American hotbeds? Why is it that Minnesota, of all places in the U.S. that have high school hockey, that it's as on big of a scale as it is in Minnesota? I think it's the population. It's kind of like, a, like for people, it's, it's kind of like a, the Texas football how football, high school football in Texas is so huge. It's just the population. So, like, when I – I mean, I, it'll be interesting. I always I always find it interesting when talking to people that I know kind of their route and how they grew up. But, like, I played for Monomedi from Mites to my, my senior year of high school. Um, I would say the longest trip I ever took would be, like, Duluth which is about an hour and a half, and then we just did that for the summer, and it was just, like, a summer tournament. Otherwise, we would play – teams within 15 minutes of us and like competitive teams and that's just our little we were section four single a there's eight sections and you know eight like one a one double a so there's 16 total and i just think it's there's so many players it's just so dense um and if you're a top player from there like you're well those guys are getting drafted out of minnesota you know like the minnesota high school the high-end guys so I would just say the density and just it's super competitive and a lot of guys won't leave to play AAA. But like like Tom, you you didn't have an option to play high school hockey, did you? Or no? No, we don't. Uh, high school's don't do not that, that big in Canada, right? It's more like just you which, start which in you, the juniors and go from there, right? Yeah, you just like have a regional team, like a team in every city. I think kind it's, of like it's so interesting because like uh, I lived in college, I lived with uh, three Canadians and they would always talk about how their route was to get to junior as quick as, as they could, like yeah. as young and as quick, obviously. Where for us, if you're good enough, you can just play high school and go straight to college. That's the dream, I would say. Yeah not always doable like in sask though it's like so many small towns like just yeah, and they're like so far every, spread out every right? 50 every 15 minutes like you're coming across a small town and like they all have like a small town school so like you can't really like have a yeah that makes sense team and yeah old john cougar mellencamp small town that's every high school graduation theme song <laughs> no so. really oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you? small town fair enough fair enough so you said you, you never really went further than an hour outside of your own town just to play competitively. So what was that like the first time? Like how much of a, how mind blowing of an experience was that when you finally played a, a competitive high level game outside of your own state? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say juniors was a huge eye opener for me. Like just the whole game, the physicality, like not that Minnesota high school hockey's it's pretty soft, isn't it? Soft yeah, by any you, means. I heard all you guys are pretty soft out there. It's it's. I'm, I would just say it's more of like a, it's just kind of skilled. You get teams like the Northern boys, like Ole, though that's some rough hockey. That's like we'd always go up there. Those guys play. They play the game the right way. Um, but then you go to juniors where I mean fighting gets involved. Half shields are involved and. Um, I, my first year I started off in Bismarck and I think it was like, we took like a 12 hour road trip and I was a rookie. So we doubled up and it was, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> gets, hate to see that. Yeah. Get, get, got subway for lunch and I was like, Oh, this is all we get. <laughs> oh goodness. But no, it's just, it's a quick adjustment. And then, I mean, you always, you learn from as you go. Right. So definitely interesting. Alrighty. So we kind of touched on it a little bit, uh, with, 
the the last couple of games on the, on the road trip, uh, and now with the the Solar Bears, we're st- we finally started up the the puck cast again. Now that uh, we're fully into the into the 2019-20 season, coming up this week, as we said, some big games. Uh, Florida on the road tomorrow. Back to the Amway Center on Thursday and Friday against South Carolina, and back at home on uh, on Sunday against Florida again. Um, what have been some of the things now that you guys got on the ice earlier today? You had Monday off to to recover from the travel and everything. What's the 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 plan going into this week's set of games? Well, a couple wins would be nice. Start off with that. I mean, we we touched on it before. These are two good teams, so I mean, obviously, see how you stack up. And I think this time of the year, points really matter now. Like obviously they do early in the year, but as you're starting to look at the standings, you can either spread yourself out and create a gap, or you know, I mean, slip out of a playoff spot, or you know, slip in. So it's going to be big these next next five games or whatever it is. Yeah, I'd say. Um, so this is my technically second year. I haven't I haven't been in the playoffs yet, and I really want to play in playoffs. And I know how tight, like Tomer said, it's the last month. It's everything just closes and it gets so every game matters so much. So every game we can win now is just helping us out, Um, especially with some of these, you know, we're playing the top two teams in our division conference right now. So um, these are just these are stealing points if we can get these. So, I mean, both really good teams. We're a really good team. Last time we played Soko. You know, we we won. We played them really well. So I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's just going to be a really good testament to see where we're at and what we need to do if, you know, so. I heard a um, a rumor, actually. Oh, great. Here we go. All right. Let's hear it. Um, so we were in Wheeling for Super Bowl there, and we – sat around all day and our flight was what was time was our flight like i, did, I five, think i heard this room five, five, i yeah. have n- i had nothing I to do with that the time the that the flight a- departed the 9 a.m <laughs> i heard there's a 9 a.m flight we could have got on you said no we want to wait so we could watch the super bowl together on the flight is that true no i said that we would have the option of watching it on the uh, flight better I, that oh, no. than watching on another airline at least there was a silver I lining i didn't I, make it up i just heard it that I rumor heard is false rumor. Okay. that rumor is false and that 9 a.m flight was not a direct we wouldn't have gotten in until just about the same time into orlando it would have taken us to baltimore well, we would have to wait so in, in knew, baltimore so in the mid afternoon yeah you knew about this flight <laughs> what what <laughs> good would that have done we still would have taken off from baltimore at around the same time that the game would have started and landed in orlando right during the the middle of the game i don't even watch the super bowl i, don't know. I know yeah you're a gray cup guy go uh, riders go riders go riders you're a gray cup guy uh, yeah i have nothing to do with that you and the rumors last year was the other thing and we're not even going to get into that we're not even going to get showers with his bathing suit on yeah which we disproved and we that found out you were the one that started it uh, I, uh, and i blame colby i blame poor colby for that no there's a couple people got blamed colby for a long time though well, you let me believe it yeah, hey tom you let me believe it tomer's always good if tomer comes up and starts talking to you and you start getting like taps you always got to check your shoulders tomer's like yeah, he's, he's, soft he's pretty sly you should tell him the story about dill Oh, yeah, that was a good one. So last game in Wheeling. That was the best one I've ever seen. Last game in Wheeling. So Dylan Fitzy, we all, everyone calls him Dill. It's yeah. a term of endearment, just a, it's a nickname. Great so, nickname. So, you know, when you're a little kid and you have, like, you're at a hockey camp or whatever, and, like, they write on a piece of tape and they stick it on your helmet your name. Like, mm-hmm. so you have Jesse Liebman or, you know, Taylor. John, 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 John O. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote on a piece of tape in big, bold letters, I wrote Dill. And I, he was taping a stick for warm-ups, and I just went up behind him, like, Dill, how you doing? And I slapped it on his head, and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. I'm like, I'll talk to you later. And he walked around with Dill on his cap for, oh, man, it was a good 15 minutes, and everyone's like going up to him like hey dill how you doing like, dill <laughs> there was a yell. It, it was it was it, it was so good that he was like he would go like room to room and all of a sudden i just hear like guys would pa- pass him in the hallway would just start dying laughing yeah, and they're like dill <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was a good one that's it's nice to keep it light like that yeah we, gotta, we got a really good group for that 100 percent. well it's nice that you guys are able to to joke around and i gotta say i appreciate you incorporating me into it although i don't know if my shoes are as uh as yeah, fortunate the old shoe check that 
was yep. a, that was a phenomenal song, Jesse. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, you, must have, you must have been practicing that one for a little bit, no? No, I just channel my inner, inner Freddie Mercury. All right, so so co- some context because yeah, yeah, there yeah. there is no context there, and no true, one would understand true. what the, what the heck is going on. I got once again shoe checked uh, on our most recent road trip. What that is, Tomer, care to explain? Being or, or Jono, one of you, care to explain what that is? Uh, so shoe check would be at a uh, team meal, something like that, where all the guys are together. If someone ends up putting a piece of food on your shoe and there's a shoe check called and you have food on your shoe you end up having to sing a song um and jesse sang very well yeah you got it three times now i think in the three years third time in a row or third third year in a row twice during the playoffs twice during the playoffs and then now regular season. You sang O Canada twice. <laughs> twice, yes. Well, the first time around that, in the in the restaurant, that would, that would have been good. a treat. Yeah, that would have been really a treat. Good. And he sang it well. Like you, you thank you. You thank invested. You. Some guys, you know, they ha- like you know, yeah. like, they half it, and it's like uh, like Jesse committed. To, like it was good. That's the only way it's not awkward. Yes, is I agree. To fully commit. Yeah, you have to. Because I mean, everyone in their time, I've been shoe checked. Everyone's been shoe checked. Tom or maybe not, because he's so. What's he's the sliding. what's the go to then for you? I don't even remember what I sang. I, I mean, it's just whatever you know. Uh, like, I'm not a huge song guy. Like, I love listening to music or not, but, like, I'm not very good at, like, I would say knowing lyric to lyric to lyric. So whatever I have in my head. But the whole trick is just if you go up there shy and you're nervous, then it's just uh, it's, yeah, it's awkward. It's awkward, yeah. Because yeah. like, nobody's good at that. Nobody can just go up and belt it. That's why I said kudos. Like, you went up there and ripped it, and that's, that's well, what you got to do. You got to give it 100%. And, and then, guys, then it's actually pretty funny, and guys enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm assuming it was Fucali. So, again, context. So the nature of how this happened, the only thing I can think of was that it had to have been Fucali as he walked up because he came up to the table. I was sitting with our, our bus driver and across from from the coaching staff and the, the training staff and Fuchs just started asking me some questions and then just oh, casually no. walked there, away. That, was, that, that was had a, to have been the... Di- it was the distraction. Yeah, there was definitely but a second oh, guy. So in. there's an art to it. There's, oh, I can't yeah. tell you who it was. I can already tell you that was the distraction. Yeah, sure. Fuchs came up to you and was the distraction and then someone came in. Snuck underneath. Yeah. Because you guys were on a table that was elevated away from the rest of the the staff, so... Yeah, Yeah. they did you dirty. Mm. Crafty. I'm going to have to be on the lookout for that next time. Or how about you get someone else? Although the last time we got someone else, they didn't even bother to sing. Oh, yeah. That was... Shawzy. That was... That was... Do you know who I would love to hear sing? Is Dax. Dax, yeah. I, I think he could... He would commit to it, too. He would... That, that, that's what I'm saying. You gotta fully commit. And he would fully commit. Yeah, absolutely. Who do you think? Who do you think has the best voice on our? Actually, best voice on our team. Mm. I already know it. As sometimes morning skates, he'll kind of pipe o- up. Oli, are you talking? Yeah, about? Oli's not bad. You see him on the jumbotron when he did uh, "Loving on a Prayer." Hysterical. He did pretty good. Not bad. I mean, no one's heard me sing, but <laughs> I've been told you are the songbird of your generation. Some people's words, not mine. <laughs> yes. Well. Yeah, so unfortunately, it was a uh, marinara sauce that whoever, whoever oh, got a, me. That's a good. That's with. a quick cleanup, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had black shoes on, didn't you? I did. It's yeah. it's these shoes, but they these shoes have taken a beating over the years. I think I'm in. I'm due for a new pair. It's been a while. Yeah, you got to upgrade. I mean, the amount of we wear our dress shoes and like suits and stuff. You know, so you true. you got to get a new pair every year for sure. That are just you know, buff them up. Bring them over, I'll buff them up for you. The, I think these are past the point of uh, the, the toes, uh, the leather on the toes are past the point of buffing. Oh, they're, they're, kinda, they're pretty scuffed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably going to be in line for a new pair of shoes. Going to have to head up. Uh, and outlets. Yeah, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. The trick is I've never been to the outlets during a time where I can find a place to park. It's always a madhouse there. I've never been to the outlets. No? Oh. They're pretty nice? I mean... There are outlets. I mean, you got some <laughs> nice deals there. What, which ones are we talking about? Someone was saying down by, uh, where is it? Universal has nice outlets. That has a big, big mall down there. No. Yeah, Mall of Millennium, right? Isn't that the yeah the outlets kind of nearby there? Tom, are you three years? You got to know these things. I'm not big on names. Uh, the old lady takes me around. She's yeah, she's the boss, right. so she'll take me shopping, and I usually just when 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 where's the wedding date? Wedding date is uh, 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> on the spot. July 10th, uh, 2021. And that's it. So when, when in, should me and Jesse expect the invites? Well, is it back, gonna, in, back in Saskatoon or? It's uh, not Saskatoon. Uh, Sas- not, Saskatchewan, yeah. yeah. And, um, well, it's going to be uh, paperless invites. So. Paperless. Oh, ah. nice. e, yeah, hey, saving the world. Yeah, I mean. One invite at a time. Feeding the world. I'm a farmer, you know, saving yeah. the world, you know. So is Harper, is Harper bringing the, the rings down the aisle? No, yeah, we'll see how this this the puppy training, training goes. <laughs> and maybe that would be that'd be pretty. Yeah, no, that'll be a wild wedding. You guys better come. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, I, I guess that's a good uh, a good note to end on here for uh, the return of the Orlando Solar Bears podcast. Uh, again, thanks to our guests today, John O'May and Taylor Thompson, for joining us here at the New Six Studios while we knock this out and kind of hopefully get back into a rhythm of, of doing these on, on a more frequent basis. Uh, but Solar Bears back in action on Wednesday. They head down to Hertz Arena to take on the Florida Everblades and then a couple of home games this weekend, including a Thirsty Thursday on Thursday and a Fairwind Solar Bears Sunday. Should be a couple of good games, and uh, hopefully uh, Solar Bears are able to take some points from two of the top teams in this division. Yeah, thanks for having us, Jess. Thank you. Thanks, Jess.